Lily, it's Auntie Sonia, and I just wanted to make a video mail for you of the new books that I that I bought you for your birthday. Now these are Gabby and my favorite bedtime stories, and I was hoping that you would like them too. Now I know that you're a good reader, and that you can probably read them by yourself, but I just wanted to do something extra special and read at least the first one to you. So here goes. This is Junie B. Jones in the Stupid Smelly Bus. This is when Junie B. Jones goes to kindergarten. You're in first grade, and there's also when Junie B. Jones graduates from kindergarten and goes to first grade. But I wanted to start from the very beginning of the series of books. So here goes. Junie B. Jones in the Stupid Smelly Bus by Barbara Park. It was coming to get me. Get in line, get in line, said Mrs. When we get outside, I want all my bus students to come with me. The rest of you must go to the crossing guard. Everyone was lining up. I was the very last one. Just then the bell rang and Mrs. marched out the door. Then everybody else marched out too, except guess what? I didn't. Dun dun dun. What do you think is gonna happen in this book? If you get in line when you're in school, should you stay behind and hide? I don't think so. Here's the table of contents. The first chapter is Meeting Misses. Here's the first picture. That's Junie B. Jones. It says, my name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B and that's all. I'm almost six years old. Almost six is when you get into kindergarten. Kindergarten is where you go to meet new friends and not watch TV. My kindergarten is the afternoon kind. Today was my first day of school. I'd been to my room before though. Last week, mother took me there to meet my teacher. It was called Meet the Teacher Day. My teacher was decorating the bulletin board with the letters of the alphabet. I already know all of those letters, I said. I can sing them, except I don't feel like it right now. My teacher shook, her, shook my hand, only our hands didn't fit together that good. Her name was Mrs. I can't remember the rest of it. Mrs. said I look cute. I know it, I said. That's because I have all my new shoes. I held my foot up way up high in the air. See how shiny they are? Before I put them on, I licked them. And guess what else? I said, this is my bestest hat. Grandpa Miller bought it for me. See the devil horn sticking out of the sides? There she is with Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. laughed, except I don't know why. Devil horns are supposed to be scary. Then we walked around the room and she showed me where stuff was. Like the easels where we get to paint and the shelves where the books are and the tables where we sit and don't watch TV. One of the tables on the front of the room had a red chair. I would like to sit here, I think, I told her. But Mrs. said, we'll have to wait, see, Ju Junie. B, I said, call me Junie B. I hollered the B part real loud so she wouldn't forget it. People are always forgetting my B. Mother rolled her eyes and looked at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. Are you going to ride the bus, Junie B? Mrs. asked. I made my shoulders go up and down. I don't know, where's it going to? My mother nodded her head and said, yes, she'll be riding the bus. That made me feel scary inside because I never ride a bus before. Yeah, only where's it going to, I asked again. Mrs. sat on her desk. Then she sat my, then she and my mother talked more about the bus. 
I tapped on Mrs. Guess what? I still don't know where it's going to. Mrs. smiled and said the bus driver's name was Mr. Wu. Mr. Wu, said Mother. That's an easy name for Junie B to remember. I covered my ears and stamped my foot. Yeah, only where's the stupid smelly bus going to? Oh my goodness. Look how in shock Mrs. and her mother looks. Mother and Mrs. frowned. Frowning is when your eyebrows look grumpy. Watch yourself, Missy, said Mother. Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. I looked down at my shoes. They didn't look as shiny as they did before. Just then, another mother and a boy came in, and Mrs. went off to talk to them instead of me. I don't know why, though. The boy was hiding behind the mother and acting very babyish. I can't beat... I can beat that boy up, I think. After that, my mother sat me down and explained about the bus. She said it's yellow and it's called a school bus and it stops at the end of the street. Then I get on it and I sit down and it takes me to school. And then your teacher will meet you in the parking lot, said mother. Okay, Junie B, won't that be fun? I nodded the word yes but inside my head said the word no. Chapter two, feeling squeezy. I stayed scared about the bus for a whole week. And last night when my mother tucked me into bed, I still felt sickish about it. Guess what, I said. I don't think I wanna ride that school bus to kindergarten tomorrow. Then my mother rumpled my hair. Oh, sure you do, she said. Oh, sure I don't, I said back. The mother kissed me and said, it'll be fun, you'll see, just don't worry. I did though, I worried very much and I didn't sleep so good either. And this morning I felt very droopy when I got up and my stomach was squeezy and I couldn't eat my cereal and so I watched TV until Mother said it was time to get ready to go. Then I put on my skirt that looks like velvet and my new fuzzy pink sweater, and I ate half a tuna fish sandwich for lunch. And after that, Mother and I walked to the corner to wait for the bus. And guess what? There was another mother and a little girl there too. The little girl had curly black hair, which is my favorite kind of head. I didn't say hello to her though, cause she was from a different street, that's why. Then finally this big yellow bus came around the corner and the brakes screeched very loud and I had to cover my ears. Then the door opened and the bus driver said, hi, I'm Mr. Wu, hop on. Except I didn't hop on cause my legs didn't want to. I don't think I want to ride this bus to kindergarten, I told mother again. Then she gave me a little push. Go on, Junie B, she said. Mr. Wu is waiting for you. Be a big girl and get on. I looked up at the windows. The little girl with the curly black hair was already in the bus. She looked very big sitting up there and kind of happy. Look how big that little girl is acting, Junie B, said mother. Why don't you sit right next to her? It'll be fun, I promise. And so I got on the bus and guess what? It wasn't fun. Chapter three, the stupid smelly bus. The bus wasn't like my daddy's car at all. It was very big inside and the seats didn't have any cloth on them. The little curly girl was sitting near the front and so I tapped on her. Guess what, I said. Mother said for me to sit here. No, she said, I'm saving this seat for my best friend, Mary Ruth Marble. Then she put her little white purse on the place where I was going to sit. And so I made a face at her. Hurry up and find a seat, young lady, said Mr. Wu. And so I quick sat down across, the, across from the curly mean girl and Mr. Wu shut the door. It wasn't a regular kind of door though. It folded in half. And when it closed, it made a whooshy sound. I don't like that kind of door. If it closes on you by accident, it'll cut you in half and you, 
and you will make a squishy sound. The bus made a big roar. Then a big puff of black smelly smoke came out from the back end of it. It's called bus breath, I think. Mr. Wu drove for a while, then the brakes made that loud, screechy noise again. I covered my ears so it couldn't get inside my head. Because if loud, screechy noises get inside your head, you have to take an aspirin. I saw that on a TV commercial. Then the bus door opened again, and a dad and a boy with a grouchy face got on. The dad smiled, then he plopped the grouchy boy right next to me. This is Jim, he said. I'm afraid Jim isn't too happy this afternoon. The dad kissed the boy goodbye, but the boy wiped it off his cheek. Jim had a backpack. It was blue. I love backpacks. I wish I had one of my very own. One time, I found a red one in a trash can, but it had a little bit of gushy on it, and mother said no. Jim's backpack had lots of zippers. I touched each one of them. One, two, three, four, I counted. Then I unzipped one. Hey, don't, yelled Jim, and he zipped it right back again. Then he moved to the seat in front of me. I hate that, Jim. After that, the bus kept stopping and starting, and lots of kids kept getting on, loud kids, and some of them were the kind who looked like meanies. Then the bus began getting very noisy and hot inside, and the sun kept shining down on me and my fuzzy, hot sweater. And here's another hot thing. I couldn't roll down my window because it didn't have a handle, and so I just kept on getting hotter and hotter. And it smelled in the bus, too. The bus smelled like an egg salad sandwich. I want to get off of here, I said right out loud, but nobody heard me. I hated in this stupid smelly bus. Then my eyes got a bit little a little bit wet. I wasn't crying though cuz I'm not a baby, that's why. After that, my nose started running. Only the bus didn't have a glove compartment, which is where you keep the travel tissues, of course. And so I had to wipe my nose on my fuzzy pink sweater sleeve. Then I stayed on the bus for about an hour or 3 until Finally, I got, I saw a flagpole in a playground. That meant we were at kindergarten. Then Mr. Wu drove the bus into the parking lot and stopped. I jumped up very fast because all I wanted to do was get off that stupid smelly thing. Only guess what? That Jim pushed right in front of me. And the curly mean girl did too. And then people started squishing me real tight. And so I pushed them away and they pushed me right back. And that's when I fell down and a big foot stepped on my skirt that looks like velvet. Stop it, I yelled. Then Mr. Wu hollered, hey, hey, hey. And he picked me up and helped me off the bus. Mrs. was waiting for me, just like my mother said. Hi, I'm glad to see you, she called. Then I ran over to her and I showed her the big footprint on my skirt that looks like velvet. Yeah, only look what happened. I got stepped on and now I'm soiled. Mrs. brushed it. Don't worry, Junie, she said. It'll come off. After that, I just folded my arms and made a frown. Because guess what? She forgot my bee again. Chapter four, me and Lucille and some other kids. Some of the other bus kids turned out to be in my class too. One of them was that Jim, that Jim I hate. Mrs. Made, up, made us line up, then we followed her to the room. Its name is room nine. There were other kids waiting by the door. When Mrs. unlocked it, everyone squeezed in all at once. That Jim stepped on my new shoe. He made a scratch mark on my shiny toe. The kind of scratch that licking won't fix. Hey, watch it, you dumb Jim, I hollered at him. Mrs. bent down next to me. Let's try to use our quiet voice while we're in school, she said. I nodded nicely. 
I hate that gym, I said in my quiet voice. After that, Mrs. clapped her hands together very loud. I want everyone to find a chair and sit down as fast as you can, she said. That's when I ran to the table with the red chair. Only guess what? There was already someone sitting there, a girl with little red fingernails. And so I tapped on her and said, I would like to sit here, I think. No, she said, I am. Yeah, only I already picked that chair out, I told her. Ask my mother if you don't believe me. But the girl just shook her head no. And the missus clapped her loud hands again and said, please find a seat. And so then I had to quick sit down in a stupid yellow chair, the same stupid color as the stupid yellow bus. After that, Mrs. walked to the big closet in the back of the room. It's called the supply closet. She got out boxes of new pointy crayons and some white circles. Then she passed them out and we had to print our names on the circles and pin them to our fronts. It was our first work. If you need help spelling your name, raise your hand, said Mrs. I raised my hand. I don't need help, I told her. Grandma Miller says I print beautifully. I used red, but then a mistake happened. I made my Junie too big, and there wasn't any room left for my B, and so I had to squish it very teeny at the bottom. I hate this stupid dumb circle, I hollered. Mrs. made the shh sound and gave me a new one. Thank you, I said nicely. Grandma Miller says I print beautifully. The girl with the little red fingernails was faster than me. She showed me her circle and pointed to her letters. L-U-C-I-L-L-E. That spells Lucille, she says. I, I like that name of Lucille, I said. Because guess why? Seals are my favorite animals. That's why. Then Mrs. passed out drawing paper and we drew pictures of our family. Mrs. put a happy face sticker on mine. It was very good, except I made a father too teeny and mother's hair looked like sticks. After that, Mrs. took our class on a walk around the school. Everyone had to find a buddy to walk with. My buddy was Lucille. We held hands. The boy I can beat up was right in front of us. His buddy was that gym. That gym I hate. The first place we walked to is called the Media Center. My mother calls it a library. It's where the books are. And guess what? Books are my favorite things in the whole world. Hey, there's a jillion of them in here, I hollered, feeling very excited. I think I love this place. The librarian bent down next to me. She said to use my quiet voice. Yeah, only guess what? Right now, I just like the kind of books with pictures. But mother says when I get big, I'm going to like the kind with just words and also stewed tomatoes. The boy I can beat up said, shh. I made a fist at him. Then he turned around. After that, we went to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is where kids eat lunch, except not when you're in kindergarten. Um, I said, it smells yummy in here, just like paschetti and meatballs. Then that Jim turned around and held his nose. P U, I smell you, he said. Lucille laughed very hard, and so I stopped holding her hand. The next place we went to was the nurse's office. It's very cute in that place. There are two little beds where you get to lie down and two little blankets that are the color of plaid. And our nurse doesn't look like a nurse. She doesn't wear white clothes and white shoes. Our nurse is just a regular color. Lucille raised her hand. My brother said that last year he came here and you let him take off his shoes and he got a drink of water and just his socks. That Jim turned around again. P-U, I smell your feet, he said to Lucille. This time, Lucille stuck her tongue out at him. After that, we held hands again. 
Chapter 5, Principal. After we left the nurses, we went to the main office. That's where the boss of the school lives. His name is Principal. Principal is a baldy. He talked to us. Then Lucille raised her hand. My brother said that last year he had to come down here and you yelled at him and now he's not allowed to beat up kids at recess anymore. Principal kind of laughed. Then he held the door for us to leave. After that, we walked to the water fountain and Mrs. Lettuce get a drink. I didn't get a long one though, cause kids kept tapping on me. Hurry up girl, they said. Yeah, only guess what? That's not even my name, I told them. Her name is Junie Bumblebee, said Lucille. Then she laughed, but I didn't think it was very funny joke. After that, Mrs. showed us where the bathrooms were. There's two kinds of bathrooms in our school, a boy's kind and a girl's kind. I can't go to the boy's kind though, cause no girls allowed, that's why. I tried to peek my head in there, but Mrs. snapped her fingers at me. The only boy who got to go into the bathroom was the boy I can beat up. He was jiggling around very much. Then he started running all over the place and he was holding the front of his pants. William, said Mrs., are you having an emergency? Then William yelled, yes, and he ran right in there. The rest of us walked back to our room. I touched Lucille's fingernails. She said that her fingernail polish is named Very, Very Berry. And I would like to have fingernails red, too, I said, but I'm not allowed to have the kind of polish that makes them look shiny. It's called clear. Clear is the color of spit. I hate clear, said Lucille. Me too, I told her. And also, I hate yellow, which is the color of the stupid smelly school bus. There they are waiting to go to the bathroom and there's the boy she can beat up ha having an emergency. Lucille nodded her head. My brother said when you ride home on the bus, kids poured chocolate milk on your head. Then all of a sudden my stomach felt very squeezy again because I had to ride that bus home. That's why. Why did you have to tell me that for, Lucille? I said, kind of grouchy. After we got back to room nine, we did some more work. It was a game to help us learn each other's names. I, I, oh, I learned Lucille and also a girl named Charlotte and another girl named Grace. Then I learned a boy named Ham, which we eat at Grandma Miller's. Pretty soon, Mrs. clapped her loud hands together. Okay, everyone, gather up your things. It's almost time for the bell. Then I heard a noise in the parking lot. It was the screechy brakes. And so I looked out the window and I saw the school bus. It was coming to get me. Oh no, I said kind of loud. Now I'm going to get chocolate milk poured on my head. Then I chewed on my fingers. Get in line, get in line, said Mrs. When we get outside, I want all of my bus students to come with me. The rest of you must go to the crossing guard. Everyone was lining up. I was the very last one. Just then, the bell rang and Mrs. marched out the door. Then everybody else marched out too, except guess what? I didn't. Chapter six, a good hider. When you're the last one in line, nobody watches you. That's how come nobody saw me when I ducked behind the teacher's desk and hid. I'm a good hider. One time at Grandma Miller's house, I hid under the kitchen sink. Then I made a growly sound and sprung out at her. I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Anyway, I stayed scrunched behind the teacher's desk for a while, and then I saw a better place to hide. It was a big supply closet in the back of the room, and so I ran back there very fast, and I squeezed onto the bottom shelf. I squeezed right on top of the construction paper. Most of me was comfortable, 
except my head was sort of tight and my knees were all bended like when I do a somersault. Then I pulled the door mostly closed. Don't shut it all the way though. And I mean it, I said right out loud. I stayed real quiet for lots of minutes. Then I heard noises in the hall and some feet came running into the room. Big people's feet, I think. What happened? I heard someone ask. One of my little girls is lost said a voice that sounded like Mrs. Her name is Junie B. Jones and she didn't get on the bus. So now we've got to go out looking for her. Then I heard some keys jingle and the feet went running out again and then the door shut. I still didn't come out of the closet though. When you're a good hider, you can't come out for a very, very long time. I just stayed there all bended up and I told myself a story. Not an out loud story. I just told it inside my head. It was called The Little Hiding Girl. I made it up and this is how it went. Once upon a time, there was a little hiding girl. She was in a secret spot where no one could find her, except her head was very tight and her brain was squishing out. But she still couldn't come out of her spot or a smelly yellow monster would get her and also some meanies with chocolate milk the end after that i rested my eyes resting your eyes is what my grandpa does when he watches tv after dinner then he snores and grandma miller says go to bed frank it's not the same thing as a nap though because naps are for babies that's why and anyway i didn't snore i just did a little drool then finally when my eyes were done resting they woke up and so I came out of the closet and ran right to the window. And guess what? There weren't any cars in the parking lot and no stupid smelly bus either. Phew, that's a relief, I said. A relief is when your stomach doesn't feel squeezy anymore. After that, I went back to the closet because while I was hiding, I sniffed the smell of clay. That's why. And clay is my very favorite thing in the whole world. Hey, I see it up there, I said. The clay was in the middle shelf. I stood on the chair to get it. It was blue and stiff. And so I had to roll it on the floor to make it soft and warm. Then I rolled it into a blue orange. It was very beautiful, except it had some dirt and hair on it. After I was done, I went to the front of the room and sat down in my teacher's big chair. I like teacher's desks very much. The drawers are so big, I could fit in one, I think. I opened up the top one. There were happy face stickers and rubber bands and also gold stars, which I love a very lot. I stuck one on my forehead. Then I found paper clips and red marking pins and new pencils with no points and scissors and travel tissues. And guess what else? Chalk. I said, brand new chalk that's not even out of its box yet. Then I stood up on my teacher's chair and clapped my hands together very loud. I want everyone to find a chair and sit down. Today we are going to learn some alphabet and some reading. And also I will teach you how to make a big blue orange. But first everyone has to watch me draw stuff. Then I went to the board and drew with my brand new chalk. I drew a bean and a carrot and some curly hair. Then I wrote some O's. O's are my bestest letter. After that, I bowed. Thank you very much, I said. Now you may all go out for recess. I smiled, except for not at that gym. Chapter 7 peaky holes and spying. After a while, I started to get a little bit thirsty. That's what happens when chalk sprinkles get in your throat. I would like a drink of water, I think, I said. Then I put my hands on my hips. Yeah, only what if somebody sees you at the water fountain? Then they might call the stupid smelly bus to come and get you. And so you better not go. 
I stamped my foot. Yeah, only I have to though, because there's dumb chalk in my throat. Then all of a sudden I got a great idea. I pulled the chair over to the door and I peeked out the window at top. I'm a good peeker. One time I peeked right into Grandpa Miller's mouth when he was sleeping and I saw that dangly thing that hangs down in the back. I didn't touch it though, cause I didn't have a little stick or anything, that's why. Anyway, I didn't see anybody in the hall, so I opened the door a crack and I sniffed. <laughs> cause when you sniff, you can smell if there's people around. I learned sniffing from my dog, Tickle. Dogs can smell everything. People can mostly just smell big smells like stink and flowers and dinner. Nope, don't smell anyone, I said. Then I ran to the water fountain and I drank for a long time and nobody tapped on me and said, hurry up girl. After that, I stood on my tippy toes and I tippy toed to the media center because I love that place, remember? The media center is kind of like a fort. The shelves are like walls and the books are sort of like bricks. And you can move some of them around and make peaky holes. Peaky holes are what you spy out of. Then if you see somebody coming, you can make your breath very quiet and they won't find you. I spied for a long time, but nobody came. The only people in the media center were just me and some fish. The fish were in a big glass tank. I waved at them in there. Then I stirred them with a pencil. I love fish very much. I eat them for dinner with coleslaw. Just then I saw my most favorite thing in the whole world. Its name is an electric pencil sharpener. And it was sitting right in the librarian's desks. Hey. I said, very excited. I think I know how to work that thing. Then I looked in the desk drawer and guess what? There were lots of brand new pencils in there. And so I sharpened them. It was funner than anything because an electric pencil sharpener makes a nice noise and you can make pencils as teeny as you want. You just keep pushing them into the little hole and they just keep getting teenier and teenier. It doesn't work on crayons though. I tried a red one. Then the pencil sharpener slowed way down. And then it made a sound. And after that, it didn't go anymore. Just then I heard a noise. It was walking feet and it made me scared inside because I didn't want anyone to find me, that's why. And so I squatted way down and looked through my peaky hole. There she is looking through her peeky hole. Then I saw a man with a trash can. He was singing somewhere over the rainbow. That's a song I know. It's from my favorite movie, which is called The Wizard of Odds. The man with the can didn't see me. He walked down the hall. Then I heard him go outside. I stayed squatted down for a long time, but he never came back. Phew, that was a close one, I said. And so then I ran to find a better place to hide. Chapter eight, the dangerous nurse's office. Guess where I ran to? Straight to the nurse's office, of course, because there's those little plaid blankets to hide under. There's other neat stuff in there too, like a scale to weigh yourself and a sign with a giant E and other letters. The nurse uses the sign to test your eyes. She points to the letters and you have to yell out their names. You have to yell the E the loudest. That's how come it's so big. And guess what else I saw in the nurse's office? Band-Aids, that's what. I love those guys. They were on top of the desk, and so I opened the lid and I sniffed them. Mmm, I said, because Band-Aids smelled just like a brand new beach ball. Then I dumped them out. They were the most prettiest Band-Aids I ever saw. They were red and blue and green and also yellow, which is the color I hate. And they were different shapes too, 
There were squares and circles, and some were that very long kind, which are called triangles, I think. I put a green circle on my knee. That's where I fell down on the sidewalk last week. It's mostly all better now, but if I press it very hard with my thumb, I can still make it hurt. After that, I put a blue tangle on my finger. That's where I got a splinter from the picnic table. Mother pulled it out with tweezers, but there's still some table in there, I think. Also, I put a red square on my arm. That's where Tickle scratched me, because I got him all wound up. Just then, I saw the nurse's purple sweater. It was hanging on the chair. I put it on. Now I'm the nurse, I said. Then I sat down and I pretended to call the hospital. Hello, hospital? It's me, the nurse. I need some more band-aids and some aspirins and some cherry cough drops. Only not the kind that make your mouth feel freezy. And I need some lollipops for when kids get needles. And also, I need a little stick or something in case I have to touch that dangly thing that hangs down in your throat. Then I pretended to call room nine. Hello, missus? Please send that Jim to my office. I will have to give him a shot. Just then, I saw the most favorite thing in the whole world. They were near the door, and their name is Crutches. Crutches are for when you break a leg. Then the doctor puts it in a big white cast with just your piggy sticking out, and you can't walk on it, and so she gives you crutches to swing yourself. I ran over and picked them up. Then I put them under my arms, only they were way too long for me, and I didn't swing that good. And so then I got another idea. I carried them to the nurse's chair, and I climbed up. There she is on the crutches. And I climbed up there so I was real tall and then I put the crutches under my arms and they fitted just right. After that, I stood on the edge of the chair and I leaned forward very slow, except then a terrible thing happened. The chair was on wheels and it rolled away from my feet and I got stuck on the crutches way high in the air and it was very dangly up there. Hey, I shouted, get me down from here. Then I wiggled around, and one of the crutches slipped, and I came crashing down and banged my head on the desk. Ow! I yelled, ow, ow, ow! Then I picked up the phone again. I quit this stupid job, I said, and then I ran out of there very fast, because the nurse's office is a dangerous place, and crutches aren't my favorite thing. Chapter 9 zooming speedy fast. I like running inside the school. It's funner than running inside your house. In school, you can zoom with your arms out like a jet plane and you don't knock over the furniture. And also, the head doesn't get broken off of your mother's bird statue, which used to be a blue jay, I think. I zoom straight to the cafeteria because there's a lots of tables to hide on in that place, only when I tried to open the door, it was all locked up. And so then I ran to another room across the hall. Only that stupid door was locked too. Hey, who did all this dumb locking? I asked. Then I started jiggling up and down because I was having a little bit of a problem. That's why the kind of problem that's called personal. And it's about going potty. And so all of a sudden, I had to run down the hall, speedy quick, right to the girl's bathroom. Only guess what? When I got there, that stupid door wouldn't open either. And so I kicked it and I hanged on the handle because I weigh 37. Open up and I mean it, I yelled. But the door just kept staying shut. It's emergency, I shouted. And then all of a sudden, I remembered about that boy I can beat up because he had emergency too, and he got to go into the boy's bathroom. And so I zoomed across the hall and I pulled on the boy's bathroom door, but that dumb thing was locked too. Stupid, stupid doors, I hollered. After that, I started to jiggle up and down very fast. Oh no, now I'm gonna have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. 
Only just then I remembered something else about emergencies, because Mother told me what to do if I ever needed help. Its name is called 911. And so then I ran back to the dangerous nurse's office, because that's where the phone was, of course. And then I picked it up, and I pushed the nine, and the one, and another one. Help! This is emergency, I yelled. All the doors are locked in this place, and I'm going to have a terrible accident. Then I heard a voice on the other end. She said for me to calm down. Yeah, only I can't, because I'm in big trouble, and I'm all by myself, and I need help real bad. Then the lady said to calm down again, except for I couldn't stand still. And so I just hung up and ran right out there. And I just kept running and running till I got to the big doors at the end of the hall. And then I run right outside, because maybe there might be a little toilet out there or something, except I didn't see one. All I could hear was sirens, loud sirens were all over the place. And they kept on getting closer and closer and then a big green fire truck came zooming right around the corner and a white police car and a red fast ambulance. And guess what else? They turned right into the school parking lot. And so I stopped jiggling for a second and I sniffed the air. Only I couldn't smell any smoke. Then I heard a grouchy voice. Hey, hold it, Missy, I yelled. And I got very scared inside because Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. I turned around and it was the man with the can and he was running at me. There he is running right at Junie B. Hold it right there, he hollered again. And then I started to cry. Yeah, only that's the trouble. I can't hold it, I said. I already hold it all I can and now I'm having emergency and all the bathrooms are locked, and now I'm going to have an accident very quick. And then the man with the can didn't look so grouchy anymore. Well, why didn't you say so, sis, he said. Then he pulled the big bunch of keys out of his pocket and he grabbed my hand. And then him and me zoomed back into the school, speedy fast. Chapter 10, Me and That Grace. The man with the can unlocked the girl's bathroom for me and I ran right in there and guess what? I made it, that's what. I didn't have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. Phew, that was a close one, I said. Then I washed my hands at the sink and I looked in the mirror and the gold star was still on my forehead. It looked very beautiful up there. After that, I went into the hall and the man with the can bended down to me. Everything okay, sis? He said. And so I nodded my head. I holded it, I said very happy. Then all of a sudden, there were lots of people running at us. There were firemen and policemen, and there was a tall lady rolling a bed on wheels. Hey, I said to the man with the can, what happened? Did somebody get runned over in here or something? Then I saw Mrs. and Principal and Mother, and they were running at us too. And then Mother bended down and hugged me very tight. After that, everyone started talking at once, and no one was using their quiet voices, and no one was smiling either. Principal started asking me a jillion questions. Mostly, they were questions about hiding in the supply closet. I'm a good hider, I told him. Principal acted a little bit grumpy. He said I wasn't allowed to do that anymore. When you go to school, you have to follow the rules, he said. What would happen if every boy and girl hid in the supply closet after school? It would get very smushy in there, I said. Then he made his eyes frowny. But we wouldn't know where anyone was, would we, he said. Yes, I said, we would all be in the supply closet. Then Principal looked up at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything again. After that, Mother looked at my band-aids. Did you hurt yourself, she asked. And so I told her about the dangerous nurse's office. And then I showed her the nurse's purple sweater and she made me give it back. After that, everybody started leaving. The firemen and the policemen and also the tall lady with the bed. Then 
finally, my mother got to take me home. And guess what? I didn't have to ride on that stupid smelly bus. Except the car wasn't that fun because mother was grouchy at me. I'm sorry the bus wasn't fun for you, Junie B, she said, but what you did was very, very wrong. Didn't you see all the commotion you caused? You had a lot of people very scared. There she is with the principal and her grouchy mother. Yes, but I didn't want chocolate milk poured on my head, I explained to her. That's not going to happen, growled mother. And you can't just suddenly decide for yourself not to ride the bus. Hundreds of kids ride buses every day and they... And if they can do it, so can you. Then my eyes got wet again. Yeah, but there's meanies on that thing, I said all sniffy. Then mother stopped being so growly. What if you ride with a... What if you had a friend to ride with, she said. Your teacher told me there's a girl in your class who will be riding the bus for the first time tomorrow. Maybe you could sit together. Would you like that? I made my shoulders go up and down. Her name is Grace, said Mother. Grace, I said. Hey, I know that Grace. I learned her today. And so when we got home, Mother called that Grace's mother, and then they talked, and then me and that Grace talked too. And I said, hi, and she said, hi, and she said, would you sit with me? And so tomorrow I get to take my little red purse on the bus, and I get to put it on the seat next to me so nobody will sit there. Nobody, except for that Grace, of course. And then she and me might get to be best buddies, and we can hold hands just like me and Lucille. And I will like that, I think. And I guess what else? Tomorrow? I think I might like a yellow a little bit too. It says, don't miss the next Junie B. Jones book. I'm gonna try and read you one of these books to send to you, okay, Lily? I love you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.